What's good, y'all? Dollar Chahana. Now, what do a lot of women like to do when they're pregnant? They're saying, oh, I'm pregnant. I can eat what I want, right? You grabbing all that little ice cream you have in your boo thing, go out at 2 o'clock at night to get you some Ben & Jerry's, little things like that, right? You stop being as active, you know, working out. If you were somebody that was lifting weights, you, you stop doing all that, right? Now, also, one thing a lot of people do not know about is called epigenetics, which means what you're doing right now is going to influence your child behaviors, okay? Yeah, right in the stomach, right? Even though they're not even out here in the earth yet, okay? Now, did you know what you're eating while you're pregnant will literally alter the taste buds of your child? So if you're eating all the sweets and all the BS, guess what's going to happen when your child comes out? They don't want the sweets, they want the BS, okay? Now, also, did you know that one out of two African-American or Hispanic kids is going to be type 2 diabetic. One out of two kids is going to be type 2 diabetic. So today, what we're going to talk about is why our current climate, why is type 2 diabetes running so rampant in the minority communities, and what we can do to ultimately reverse what's going on right now, and your kid can live a healthier lifestyle, okay? Now, just so you have some context behind why this statistic is so crazy, if you went 40 years back, right, type 2 diabetes um, was only diagnosed to people that was over the age of 65, okay? So that's already a problem, all right? Also, um, out of 100 people, only 2.5% of people um, of over the age of 65 will be type 2 diabetic. This is 40 years ago, all right? Now, that means out of 100 people you see in the lineup, only two and a half or three people is diabetic, now, fast forward to 2022, one out of 10 people over the age of 20 is type 2 diabetic, okay? And three out of 10 people is pre-diabetic, which means you're diabetic, okay? So obviously there is a problem with the nutrition aspect of everything, and a lot of people don't know what to properly eat for you to maintain a healthier lifestyle. And also, here's the kicker, if you don't know how to eat, what do you expect your child to eat? They're going to eat the exact same thing you're giving them, all right? So on this conversation, in this video, what we're going to talk about are the tips that you can start incorporating now so your child can live a healthier life, okay? That way, they're not confined to ultimately having weight problems for the rest of their time life. Why? Because if a child is type 2 diabetic now, the human body can only grow as much fat cells from 0 to 13, which means what? If you was a fat kid... Um, because of your diet from 0 to 13, you're more likely to have weight problems all your entire life, forever. Versus a kid that was somewhat eating right in the household, and because it was eating right in the household, now they're basically, um, you know, they don't really have too much weight problems, okay? And here's a kid, I was somebody who was a fat kid, right? So I lived that life. But now me reflecting back, it kind of makes sense. Why? Majority of the things that I was eating was carb-based meals. So one thing I want you to realize is carbs is not bad for you, okay? It's the dosage of carbs that kill you. You can have some pizza here and there. You can have some fries here and there. You can have some mashed potatoes and rice here and there. But is that supposed to be your go-to or main food? No. Why? Your body can't do really anything with it. And just so you have an idea of how that works. So when you are eating, Okay, your hypothalamus stimulates something in your body that's saying, hey, we're hungry, we don't see a lot of energy in our bloodstream, we need some energy, right? So that's when you start getting um, hungry, right? Ghrelin starts to rise, okay, and that's a hormone that basically tells your body um, that's produced from your fat cells, hey, we're not receiving anything, um, let's go ahead and make this person start eating, right? Now, the reason why your hypothalamus stimulates this process in your body, because it's looking for two things, two, it's looking for essential amino acids that comes from protein. It is looking for essential fats that comes from fats, okay? So ladies, do not be afraid of fats, okay? Fats don't get you fat, believe it or not. So all the things that we heard or you grew up learning, especially if you're older, oh, a low-fat diet, that's what you want to follow for you to get fat? As you can see, once they start preaching that ideology, everybody's starting to get fat. Wonder why? Everybody started gravitating to more carbs or not the right type of carbs, sugary carbs, okay? Processed carbs, highly palatable carbs, carbs that you like to overeat, okay? Now, once again, your body's looking for two um, things, essential amino acids and fats. Why? Believe it or not, your body can produce carbs or glucose from fat tissue. 
So your body doesn't need exogenous carbs, which means from an outside source, all right? But fast forward to our generation, right? Majority of what things that we consume are carbs, okay? Carbs that come in a bag that has a barcode or in a box, all right? You having carbs coming from broccoli is totally different from you having carbs from Lucky Charms. You having carbs from spinach is totally different from you having carbs from Doritos, okay? And one thing a lot of people do not think about is why do you think them Doritos, or if you actually look at the expiration date on majority of the things that you have in your pantry, why is it able to last so long? Who knows? I do know. It's because basically it got emulsifiers in it that basically holds fat and water to it. And because it is a emulsifier, bacteria cannot break through it, which means what? It cannot get molded because bacteria is not able to break through it. Now think about it. If bacteria is not able to break through these foods that you have on the shelf that you could just pop in your mouth that was sitting on the shelf for eight months, why do you think your body is able to process it? Okay? Because believe it or not, the main thing that breaks down energy or breaks down the food that you're providing it is things called mitochondria, which are basically bacteria. So yes, you got bacteria in your body right now, but we have a synergistic relationship with the bacteria. Okay? But if the outside bacteria cannot break down the food, just like we all seen the little um, thing where they put a McDonald's burger outside and four months later, it looked like as if nothing happened to it. There's a reason for it. Okay, that's the preservatives, that's the emulsifiers. But now you're putting that same McDonald's burger that we all seen inside your body and your body can handle it here and there, but not all the time. Context, right? So let's say, just to give you an analogy, let's say you had a car, vehicle, boom, right? And we all came across a YouTube video that says, hey, if you get some vegetable oil and you put some water in it, right? Believe it or not, you're not supposed to do this all the time. But if you do this here and there, your car is going to go, right? But you still want to use gas, right? But you come across this video, but, you know, because we live in a microwave generation um, system, now you're going ahead and you didn't really watch the full entire video. You didn't read the disclaimer. You're just thinking, oh, damn, gas price is $4.50. Um, let me go ahead and get some vegetable oil. Let me get some water. Let me see if it works. It's working, right? So now you're like, bet, I am never putting gas in my car again. So now you just ride and ride and ride and ride and now the car breaks down to you. Why? Because that is the, not the right source of fuel for your vehicle. Carbs is not the right source of fuel for a human, right? So the carbs to us is like the vegetable oil and water mix, okay? Because your body's looking for these two things, okay? Proteins and fats. It can run off sugar, but only for so long before it starts to cause problems in the human body. Okay, because all diseases are mitochondrial diseases, which means what? You basically broke your mitochondria because you wasn't giving it the right type of nutrients to sustain the activities. Okay, does that make any sense? So what I want you to do is not break your mitochondria. And what I need to do is teach you how to eat. That way you're not giving your kids these BS and expecting them to grow, expecting them to not have behavioral problems, expecting them not to, you know, have obesity issues. We, now you see little kids walking around and they got the little gut and you think that's cute? That's not cute because that's the start to NAFLD, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which means what? Now they're going to be at risk to have weight problems all their entire life. Okay, so here are the three things that I need you to do. First things first, in your house, take out all the liquid calories, okay? If it's a liquid and it got calories in it, more than 10, you don't want it, okay? And you do not want to provide this to your kid, all right? Why? Because a lot of liquid calories have high fructose corn syrup, and what this does, it basically starts breaking down your mitochondria, okay? Only your liver can process fructose and ethanol, okay? Your whole entire body can process glucose. So you are already putting your kids at risk to start becoming some sort of pre-diabetic. And it's easier for you to drink something than eat something. So just so you have an idea, like when it comes to fruit juices, um, let's say like a smoothie, right? If I told you eat all the fruit that um, you laid down to make that smoothie, it'll be harder for you. Why? Because it got fiber in it. It's, it's almost going to be damn near impossible. But you could throw all these fruit into a smoothie, right? Make a concoction, now it's more concentrated, now you're drinking all that fruit in one time, it's gonna, of course it's gonna contain way more calories and way more sugar. So if you want some fruit, or you wanna provide your kids fruit, let them eat it, don't make them drink it.
okay? And that's the same thing for you too, all right? But all the liquid calories you don't want. So even like me, I like ginger ale. I grew up in a house with a lot of uh, juices and sodas. So that's what, I got ginger ale, zero soda. Or yeah, soda, whatever. Um, I like Sprite, so guess what I got? I got Sprite Zero, you see? So with that being said, take out all the liquid sugars, all right? Two, what you need to do is provide your kid more better meals. Your kid wants to eat proteins and fat, okay? That's why you see a lot of kids now that have braces, why? Because in order for your kids to, eat to be straight, they need omega-3s. You know where omega-3s come from? Fat. Okay, so if you're not giving a lot of kids omega threes, you're gonna notice their teeth are gonna start to become crooked, and that's why you see a lot of kids have behavioral problems. Why? Because you're not giving them the fat that's needed so their brain can sustain the activities that it needs to run off of. Okay, so if your body starts to become insulin resistant, which only becomes insulin resistant when you're giving it too much sugar, then your body cannot do the things that it needs to do, and your brain cannot do the things it needs to do. That's why you see ADHD and depression and anxiety is at all time high. All right, so I like snacks too. I'm not saying not to give your kids any snacks. Let a kid be a kid. But you giving your kid this, it's totally different from you giving your kid M&Ms. You giving your kids this popcorn, it's totally different from you giving the kids movie theater popcorn. Now, once again, they can have it here and there, right? But just not all the time, all right? Your kid's always gonna ask for chicken nuggets and fries at McDonald's, right? But it's up to you to feed them that. But what a lot of parents wanna deal with nowadays is convenience. That is the problem, okay? So when you're sending your kids off to school, do not give them the crackers and the banana and the Capri Sun and the pizza and expect them to grow or expect them to actually act right because you're giving them all the things necessary so they're not gonna grow, they're not gonna start getting smarter, okay? Or they're not gonna be able to learn as fast, right? Um, and three, they're gonna be bouncing off the walls. So now they have behavioral problems. Now they got ADHD, but it's because of the diet that you're feeding them. It's not them, it's you because that's what you're feeding them. So as you take time to build your kids' lunch, okay, give them something that's actually of substance, whole foods, okay? And you're gonna see a total 180 in your kid, total 180 in their mood, total 180 in their behavior, okay? Total 180 in their aesthetics as well, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's kind of vain, but it matters, okay? Because once again, if you have weight problems from zero to 13, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have weight problems for the rest of your life. And now you got to be a little bit more cognizant of what you're eating versus somebody else who was actually fed the right type of diet, okay? So first tip, once again, take out all the liquid calories out that diet, okay? There is nothing in that refrigerator that really got calories in it, um, no more than five, okay? Two, if it has more than five grams of carbs or sugar per serving, you do not want it. So when it comes to every single snack, you want that snack to be more on the five side when it comes to carbs than more on the 15. So 10 is cool. Once they hit to 11, you just want to tell you yourself in your head, I can find a better version of it, okay? Last but not least, three, you see a lot of kids naturally not active anymore. Why? Because all kids want to connect with their friends online. You don't see kids playing in the playground. You don't see kids riding bikes. So get your kid in the extracurricular activity, please, okay? Because ultimately, when you're moving more, your brain is actually going to do its job a little bit more efficiently, right? And because you're moving for more, your tissue it's gonna become more metabolically active, which means what? You're boosting your metabolism. So your body's able to handle more carbs the more active you are. I'm gonna say that one more time. Your body's able to handle more carbs the more active you are. So if you're somebody laying down all day, got a bonnet on your head, and you're going ahead and working remotely, and you're eating pizza, and you're eating chicken nuggets, and you're giving your kids these things too, and they're not burning it off, they're gonna get fatter, okay? So if you're active, you can have more carbs. You want to earn your carbs. Okay, the main source of fuel for your body should not be carbs. But if you actually look in your refrigerator, majority of the foods that you're providing your kids and you is carbs. Everything happens for a reason, and that's why you see seven out of ten Americans are fat. And that's why you see seven, almost, well, six out of ten African Americans are at risk for type 2 diabetes. And that's why you see four out of ten African Americans have diabetes. Everything happens for a reason. Okay, so hopefully y'all learned something today. Once again, please get your kids a little bit more active. Please pack your own kids' lunch. You want to have some protein and fat in it. And last but not least, take out all the liquid calories. That means the sodas, that means the fruit juices, but get the better version of it. Once again, just to show y'all one more time, because y'all like examples, y'all be acting like y'all can't find out things for yourself. You having this, as you can see, it's almost halfway empty. It's totally different from the regular Minute Maid. Okay, you having this, 
It's totally different from the regular um, cranberry juice. You have this milk. That's totally different from the regular one you uh, pick up from the store. Okay? And last but not least, once again, that's when it comes to the sauces, no sugar. Okay? Sugar, there's no purpose for sugar in the human body. Okay? At one point, right now, you probably got one teaspoon of sugar in your body right now. But in every single meal, you're able to give your body upwards to 10 teaspoons in one meal. And now you eat four to five meals a day. That is the problem. Okay? So... Don't feel like you cannot fix this issue, okay? It just came. You just need to come across the right information. That's what I'm here for, all right? But ultimately, this thing is going to take time. But if you're doing these steps here and there, okay, you're also going to notice that your kid's taste buds are going to change, and they're actually going to actually prefer the savory foods over the sweet foods, okay? And just a little um, throw-in fact in there for you. So it takes a kid about 13 times for them to start liking savory foods. It takes a kid only one time to like something that's sugary. Hope y'all learned something today. And that's your reset tip of the day. It's going to help you stay snatch all the time. Know in the summertime. Talk to y'all soon.